So I will just like start with the, so this chapter was a bit more like uh, hard. Well, obviously it was harder than the introduction. It introduced a lot, a lot, a lot of terms. I will still say like, even if we don't, uh, I will open the chat. So maybe Gabby said something on the chat. No, it's good. Uh, so yeah, so it was, it introduced a lot of term and terminology. And uh, yeah, so it, it's a bit, uh, I think it's a foundational sh chapters. And I will go a bit slowly on the first part. Like the chapter is divided in like, I think three part, like, let me review it. Um, this is like the, the first part is, yeah, I'm an old, old guy, I, I have printed book. Uh, the first chap, sh part is more building a Bayesian model for events, and it's related to um, fake news. The second is just a small example. I will not go too much into it because it's just like a rehearsal of the first part, but it's good to read. And it also, I think it well, I will go a bit on it. The last part was like building a Bayesian model for random variable. Um, so a lot of stuff are introduced also in these chapters and summarize in the exercise. So basically like two big parts and one small part and the exercise in summary. The goal uh, learning objective of this chapter was explore foundational probability tools. Like we will see it touched um, the joint probability, uh, a lot of probability, conduct first formal Bayesian analysis, I think this is a bit, maybe a bit oversold. Like it's not, it's it's a beginning, I will say. And practice your Bayesian grammar. I think this, this helped a lot. And finally, do a simulate of Bayesian model, which I don't think it's necessarily a Bayesian model, but it's more like a classical simulation of uh, what your prior and posterior mean. But it was also good. Um, I will go like, I will add more when we go into it. So let's go. If someone has something to say, like like all the time, like we can go. So I have just reproduced like the first part. The first data are interesting. Like you can check them uh, if you load the base full package with checking fake news. I try to find, I, I read a bit of the original article of Shu, I hope I pronounce correctly, of 2017. Uh, and it's it's bring a lot because like in the chapter you think like it's very easy like it's fake news or not fake news so we'll see like a data set which have fake news articles that have been labeled uh, as fake news and others that have been not labeled as fake news and if you read the article like it's interesting to see how the researcher have done that uh, the data the data set is way more complicated than what we have here so if you are interested in do that like I definitely recommend you like reading the article also the article is on uh, I probably pronounce it horrendously, but an Arc VX, so the, it's free, open source, and it links a lot of GitHub repository with the data and how they process it. So uh, I think it's I think it's called Archive. Yeah, okay, think, thanks. Yeah. So much. <laughs> awesome. Can you say that again? Which, uh, we, 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 which, is, which is like as a native English speaker, I think it's the wrong way to pronounce it, but I think it's called Archive. Okay, I will cut it back. Because because uh, 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 it's got an X in the end, and yeah, that doesn't really work, but apparently it's pronounced archive, I think. So it was on that. Uh, the authors on the book, like, give the link, I think. So I just click at it, and and no, I think I have to Google it, but like, with the full text, it was fine. Uh, yeah, so it's an interesting link, but I would just tell you that. So basically, like, what the data set is, I also like like I discovered that you can use janitors the package like for cleaning data for other stuff that just clean the name. It was like oh I just don't use clean name. <laughs> we can do other stuff with this package. So well it was the personal discovery but not very big. Uh, I also think at sometimes maybe we will discuss that some stuff can be done easier uh, doing not using tidyverse and just using R. But I like the authors I keeping their teaching philosophy using tidyverse. So the the uh, they define our prior here with the percentage of fake articles. So thirty percent of the article are fake, and this is the prior. And they add the new data. It's like whether or not the title of the article have an, uh, an exclamation point. 
And no, you have an article with an exclamation point. And should you consider it fake or not? So to sum it up, like we have two variables, fake versus real. Does it, this article like take fake news or real news? And does the title have an exclamation point or not? Just to be quick, the, the workflow we will use will be kind of the same on all this, um, this, this uh, chapters. We'll define the prior uh, probability model. We'll, mod, uh, we'll try to model a way to interpret the data. And we used, uh, then we'll generate the posterior probability model. So I revised a lot my LaTeX. I'm not so happy of doing it, but like, who knows? At least it, it works. It still works for the, the years. So the this why I had that, it's not very important. Like the probability of fake news is 0.4, and the probability of real is 0.6. So the author used this um this annotation, like the probability of something is B, and the opposite is usually the complement. That's why they use the C. So I think like that's why I, I add it here. So we all on points. Uh, so here, the probability of B is the prior probability of an article to be a fake news. Um, they reintroduced the idea of what, uh, see my, I, I push it a bit too far, like uh, I, don't, I should have added more space between the end of the sentences in the markdown, so I paid it. So valid probability model is, they define it, it needs to account all possible events, probably have an S here and async probability for each event, and all of that must sum to one. So this is like how you define valid probability. Um, here I put like the P, P the H is the probability that an article contain an examine point in its title, but we don't know uh, if it's fake news or not. This is another kind of probability. Uh, here, the, here according to the data they provide, we know that if an article is fake news, uh, that the title contain 20%, 26% uh, uh, of them contain an exclamation point. And if not, like if the article is re real, only 2.2% uh, contain an, uh, are fake news. So this is another way, this is the, the joint probability, the conditional probability, uh, of, uh, let me rephrase it, of, if I move that, I can read what I have written, it's probably better. The conditional probabilities help know if they give us an inside in here. It does not provide any information. So this, this is later. So this is probability of A knowing B. I think I'm correct on that. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. This is kind of always a bit hard. And the other one is the probability of, um, uh, Exclamation points, knowing uh, the article is uh, not real. So the first one is the probability of explanation point, knowing it's fake news. And the other one is probability of uh, exclamation point, knowing the article is real. That's it. This is the conditional probability. I think the author do a good job introducing it. Uh, they always start with an example, then they bring the definition. So you kind of practice before learning. I like it. Uh, also, in, so the conditional probability help know if P give us insight into A. So if, for example, the probability, the conditional probability of A knowing B is equal to the probability of A, it's just mean like the probability knowing B doesn't bring any new information. But it can also like lower, uh, the, the probability of A knowing B can be lower than probability of A. So it's mean like the probability of B lowering the probability of A. The effect, not, 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 not the probability, sorry, the effect of B on A will uh, lower. So uh, I think they make it more clear than I said, but uh, yeah, it was good. I, I, I like this part a lot. That's why I spend a lot of time on it. So normalizing constants. So <clears throat> what we want to know, uh, sure. Uh, just so I didn't understand. So if there's a question mark, an exclamation, sorry, if there's an exclamation mark, it's a fake uh, article? It's well, it can be. Like currently of what we know is like if there is an exclamation mark, 
uh, or point. I don't. You're right. It's probably mark. Uh, it's if, if if you have an explanation mark like the A, twi uh, we know that uh, an article with an explanation mark. Uh, no, all the fake article. If you if you count uh, all the fake articles, twenty six percent, a bit more, twenty seven, let's say, of them uh, are fake. Are fake. If there's no, an sorry, sorry, I mis I miss said it. When we check fake articles, we know they are fake. Okay. Fake articles, 27% 27, uh, 27% of them have an explanation mark. If okay. you check real, if you check real article, only two percent, like let's say three percent okay. of them have an explanation mark. Okay. So it gives us like they said, it's kind of when we have an explanation mark, it's likely so that's all they bring the likelihood function, it's likely that uh, we have a fake news. But okay. it's not necessarily the case. Like we all know like the, the our prayer is like 40% of the article are fake news and 60% are real. So now we are seeing a new article, it have an explanation mark. So it's like, but we don't know if it's uh, real or fake. Yeah, so that's so, why we don't need it as a posterior. Uh, for explaining the probability of A. We will not we will need it later, uh -huh. like to, to calculate, like you said, the, uh, the probability of A, because we don't have the probability of A. We don't know, uh, we don't know how in all the article the um, explanation mark uh, is distributed, if I said that. We will calculate it. So for that, to calculate this probability of A. Uh, we will need to use joint probabilities. So uh, the joint probability is the probability of observing A. Um, oh, there's some mishap. Uh, and B together. And we do that for X. We can do this because like we, what we have just two variables with two options. So we will need to find the probability of fake news exclamation the probability of real exclamation, that's what we know, and not exactly. And the probability of uh, fake news, no exclamation, and the probability of real, no explanation. We need all of them. So to do that, uh, we can do the joint probabilities, uh, which is basically like the, uh, the probability of A knowing B, multiplying the probability of B. So it's the probability of exclamation points knowing fake, multiplying fake. So I, I think like this is easier if you watch like this. Uh, so this, this, this um, yeah, like the, the old table give us all the, after like we have done the calculation. So what we have currently is the, to it's the total below, uh, or there is an error here, I think. This should be... Uh, uh uh, excuse me. So they're not independent, though. Yes, currently they're not. Like then, knowing B, knowing uh, knowing if an article is uh, fake will give us inside if you have an exclamation point, and the reverse is also true. Knowing if an article uh, uh, if an if an article have an exclamation point will give us inside on the fact that is fake or not. Is it better? It's difficult, no? <laughs> it's truly difficult. So interrupt me if you can think, if you think you can say it more clearly, go for it. So here in my table, there is a small error on total. Yeah, uh, I think, yeah, I think it, it should be it should be 0, 0 0.6 because it's sum to one. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, just going back to the probability there. I think it's so the probability of A. Uh, uh, given B. So that yes. is, um, it's got an exclamation mark and we know it's fake. Yes. I think there. Yes. So that yeah, you're right. The, yeah. So it's the probability of an exclamation mark given it's fake times yes. the probability that it's fake. That's it. I think. Exactly. Yeah. Did I miss it? Probably. No, no, I, you, I'm just trying to get it clear. I'm just trying to get it clear in my, in my head. You, you, <laughs> this is total, this is exactly that. So you can see it like, because like on the table, you have the probability, 
So AC is the um, is the let me think. It's the uh, not exclamation. Yeah. And A is exclamation. I should I rename them like just exclamation? And <laughs> maybe I will do that. <laughs> we'll make stuff more more easier uh, mm. at the beginning. So there is an error here, and uh, this should be uh, this should be summed to zero point six. And uh, I just copy past it quickly. Uh, so if you think like the probability exclamation points fake, you can check it on the table. So this is something like we already, I think they provide us. This is, the, um, oh, it's not on the table. Uh, this is like what they provide us. Let me go back. It's a 26%, like 27. Time B, time B, we know it. So it gives us like the probability, the joint probabilities. And then we can also calculate the joint probabilities from the probability of no exclamation uh, with fake. And these two, like knowing these two probability will allow us to know um, the, the total of, um, uh, will we'll sum up to the total of uh, B normally. Because like we, that's why we normalize, or does it say that? Yeah, you normalize to the same uh, to the same um, to the same level. Because like we let's say like, yeah, we basically like with that with this two two equation, we know all the cases where the probability of uh, no ex uh, exclamation mark with B and the probability of exclamation mark with B, which is fake news. We know all of them. And all of them is uh, 40%. That's why we, you, you, um, you weight them by that. And why they call it marginal probability? Because they are in the marginal margin of the table. That's, uh, and so, uh, probability of exclamation, par, uh, exclamation uh, mark will be our normalizing constant when we try to calculate uh, the fact that it's fake regarding it having an exclamation point. I, I have started like doing like uh, what we want here, like it's we have a new article. We know that you have an exclamation point, but we want to know if it's fake. So this is the probability of fake giving we have an exclamation point. And what we want is the probability, because obviously it cannot be fake. Like we know like a lot of them are not fake that have exclamation points that are not fake. So we can calculate it like uh, by, so I, I maybe I should have write all the equation and do the demonstration, but I think like it wasn't needed. But at the end, what we are multiplying is our prior by the likelihood, the likelihood is the L, the big knowing R, which is our data. This is what they provide us, the 26% of the all. And the prior is what we know about the fact that an article is fake. So for uh, 40%. And what we needed here was just the normalizing constant, which is the number of uh, exclamation points, the, the just the line A on the table. So it's, the joint probability of A knowing B and the joint probability of A knowing B C. We just add them that given the what's it's called the normalizing constant. And for that, we know like now we have like something like 80%, nearly 90% that the an article that given like we have an explanation, that we have like an explanation point is fake news. Is it good? This is hard, no? <laughs> So, but I, I think yeah, it, it, it is hard, yes. And I think it's also a, a bit of an intuitive, like you have to do the math to realize it. And like, you have to take your time yeah. writing the expression, writing the, uh, the equation and the authors like give you like plenty of hands, like they, they totally like help you. Okay, if no question, we can move on. So I think this is important, like the, the vocabulary important here is like the prior. The likelihood we know it's like the data, so it's kind of the probability, but on the data, not uh, on the real life. And the normalizing constant is like 
summing to every kind of possibility of this happen. So the probability of Bay giving A. So just to help get things into my thick head here. Sure, um, no, no. So, <laughs> uh, so the, the 0 0.4, that's the percentage of uh, articles which are fake, isn't it? Yep, uh, this is our free art knowledge. Yeah, yeah. And then the uh, the point two seven or yeah the twenty six twenty yeah. seven percent that is um, the percentage of the faker articles that have got a exclamation mark. Yep. I mean, on this example, the art, the the they are kind of cheating a bit because obviously yeah. uh, they have all the data. They assume like uh, yes. But yeah, in real life, you probably like don't have that. I mean, the prayer you will have to set up by yourself with other information and not like using the data to, to estimate it. I think this is how it think, works. So correct, correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, but isn't L, B, uh, yeah. and then what, what is this sign called in English? Sorry, it's not uh, the dash, this is the dash, you, this is the, yeah, is this bar. Is, I will or, call pipe. It's a pipe. Okay, in pipe. So uh, L B pipe A. If I yeah. didn't completely miss everything, is the same as the probability of A, given that you've already seen B. I think they they, they actually write that earlier in the text. But the likelihood of B given A is the same as the probability of A given B. So I think I think they are using the likelihood function to try to simplify it. Uh, and I think for some people they do simplify it, but I'm also suspecting that this is uh, for some making it more difficult. So unless I'm completely lost, then you could think of it. Usually if you when can you see repeat, the formula, I can check. <laughs> usually so when you, you see the formula, it's usually yeah. that the probability of A given that you've already seen B times yeah. the probability to see B in the first place. So oh, yeah, the, you're probability, right. the probability uh, that, I'm on a, uh, that I'm a politician based on that you've catched me lying, given the probability that you will catch me lying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's the 0 0.12, that's the, um, that would be the, total probability of someone randomly in the entire population telling a lie, not just the politicians. So if, if I didn't, I could be mistaken. So, so please do correct me if I am. But the way I understand is that I think it makes more sense the other way around. Given that you've been caught lying, what's the probability that you're a politician? That would be the 0 0.2667 in this case. And 0 0.4 is the probability that you would catch someone lying in the first place. Um, Maybe there could be a better example. <laughs> Did we lose Olivier? Ouch. He dropped the meeting. Shouldn't have brought in politics, I knew it. He would be back. While we're waiting, I'm just dropping in the chat, personally, what I found to be the best explanation behind Bayes' theorem. Um, I feel like people in this community will be familiar with three blue, one brown's content. Um, he doesn't cover statistics oh, yeah. as much, but um, when he does, it's also very good. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm yes, back. Actually. Sorry. So, uh, did you clarify uh, then when I wasn't here? So, are you hearing me? Yes. Could we could we go to the part of the text where they first mentioned the? Yeah, I found it. It's twenty one. Like it's page twenty one. I can read it if you want. Why I was reconnecting? Could, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Could, could could you share it so everyone's? Yeah. It's. Uh, or or what's me... the best way? I don't know. 
it's uh, well, I can share it. Like I have just to find the book. But give me a bit of time. Oops. Here, page twenty-one. At the bill, uh, yeah, it's page twenty-one. But on the website, I will have to search a bit for it. Uh, it's probably here. Check. It's lagging a bit, sorry. It's below that area. Uh, yeah, it's here. So if we read it correctly, do we have it? Do you all see it? This is this part. So where should I start? However, we find ourselves in the opposite situation. We know that the incoming article uses exclamation point. This is like the probability of A. Uh, what we don't know is whether or not the article is fake. So it's B uh, or real B, uh, C. Just in this case, we compare the probability of A giving B and the probability of A giving uh, B. So let, let, let me change all that. So we compare the probability of exclamation points giving uh, fake and the probability of exclamation point giving real. To a certain relative likelihood of observing data A under the different scenarios of the uncertain article uh, status. To help distinguish this application of conditional probability calculation from that, when A is uncertain, B is no. That's why they use the likelihood. So you are right. So you can as I use like the B uh, the of exclamation point giving B, giving a fake, or you can use L. But for them, it's unsure. So that's why they use the likelihood. Is it is it better? And the the same like for the for real article. Are we good? I don't think it matters too much. Like we should think of it. I think we should think of it as data. And uh, because it's a it's a it's a toy example. This is not real example. So I know sometimes time example can be misleading. But yeah, I open the chat, so maybe I'm losing stuff. <laughs> Hard formatting. And for everyone, we can spend more time on that. I think it's very important. So I, I go back to the to the book club and normalizing constants. This was where we are. But yeah, you see, like it's like you said, like if you take like this equation, the, the equation with p the fake knowing exclamation equal the p the joint uh, the exclamation knowing uh, fake this giving like the is giving you like the the formula so this is so this is like and if you check like what you have like the p the b uh, multiplying l the b the a this is the same like if you you just you, you can replace l the b the a with p the a the b is it clear <laughs> so what you said i think you you are right i'm from is it good for everyone so we have calculating the normal normalizing constants this is just the probability of a here that this is a constant and we know like uh, this is this sum up all the probabilities uh, of uh, A giving B, A giving B, C. Is it good uh, for everyone? Like, it's it's difficult. So here after that, so this is all like, so obviously like I didn't show showing it, but like the probability of us like giving, like saying like it's, uh, it can it can be like 10% a real article, giving the probability we have been given. So I've just displayed like a part of it, but it's one minus those apart. 
So currently, like what we are seeing like now is the posterior stimulation. I think this is uh, a nice example of how you can generate um, some fake data, I mean, some, some a simulation giving all the assumption we have and giving all the hypothesis and giving all the parameter of what we defined or what they give us. Uh, so I don't think there's, I mean, if you have trouble doing it or checking some part, I think like the only difficult part was this group by by one from all the row. Um, oh, awesome. I, that's great to have like a cookie as example. <laughs> great, I will check them. Uh, oh yeah, I will, I will copy past them like, so we can add them to the resource at the end also. Uh, so this, this part was a bit, I mean, I understand why, because like before they used like the sample uh, underscore N, which is a tidy verse function that's work on data, on, a, on tidy stuff. So on T-Bolt, so data frame. And after on this, they use it like the sample um, base air plot. So this this one like is not like vector, uh, it's not vectorized. It did like it can only have one input. So that's why like the group by by one to n is just a, a tidy loop. I don't know how you could call them, but it's just a way to check all the row and apply um, the data model from the da data frame. Is it, make, is it making, I think this is the only difficult part of it. I mean, this is just the part that I was like, oh. And that's why I said like, on this part, I will have to just do a, a for loop or something, just a loop instead of, but this, this work fine. So they don't have to introduce for loop and they can just use the tidy version. If you have some, and then like with all the simulation, obviously it's a simulation. So you, we don't have exactly, because like we are drawing sample in the, so the first part is like, we create the two option, real fake. We give them probability. And then we draw on that probability for 10,000 times. Um, and we replace because like, obviously it's a, the, the article can be fake uh, as you draw on them or not. And that's it. And we, we get like these nice results like, as a, uh, you have an explain, I should have changed a bit like the, to make it more clear. Like this is like having an exclamation point. Yes. And not having an exclamation point. And I uh, know, sorry, this is like, yeah, this is it. And so we can see like the proportion, but instead of calculating, doing a simulation, doing some on it. So it's kind of nice. Uh, I don't know if you have something to say about it, but. This is something that I discovered on the Richard McElroy's course. He, he, he do it a lot, but just with base R. And I think it helped a lot. He do it before doing the, I mean, he do it at the same time uh, defining the model. Here the model is fine, it's very easy, but it's good to do it at the same time you are defining your model because it helps you like formulate the model. Here we are doing it after defining the model because the model is very easy here. But I think like it can be good sometimes to try to, to create uh, the fake data, like synthetic data, by defining the parameters that you think, like the prior, like all the information you have, and see what the result is before like providing any kind of data. Okay, I will not go too much into the example because like. Uh, it doesn't provide anything like more than the first example. The just change is like, no, we have categories inside true or false. I mean, true or false have category, but now you have like a panel of category. So it just is, and I mean, if you have time, I would, you, you can do it. It's just like, you know, it's exercise, like provide you memory and, and muscle doing it. Okay. So now we, we are going on the first, uh, the, the last part and the big one too. So the data set doing it is that, so it's Yuri Gaspar against Dick Blue. He played the first time on, I don't remember the date. And now he will play another time and we are trying to estimate how, how many wins he will do. So it's on six matches. Uh, and we define the model. This is very modelish approach. We are saying like the skill of Gaspar relative to Deep Blue is P. And more skill 
is high, P will be high, Moi will win. To make stuff simpler, they will say like, I think this, this is a good choice from them because like, uh, so they said like P can only take three value, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.8. In, in another kind of modeling event, it will be like more like, like a, a total uh, continuous distribution, not just three discrete value. But taking three discrete value, it will help us, the readers, make the calc easier, the, all the calculation. In, obviously, like when you have three parameters, it's not an integral, it's just like you had three points. So it's easier to do. And that's it. Then they, they start by introducing the probability mass function, which I will speak a bit more later, but on uh, the same points. So um, if, um, and I reproduce it. Um, so according to uh, the p-value, uh, that will give us like, uh, let's, that's not the win rate, but like the, um, that will help us and um, calculate the probability of your real winning game against in blue, let's say that. Okay, uh, here we will use a binomial model or binomial distribution. So we have defined p, which is, an imaginary variable that we try to use to summarize the, the matches, help us like just building a model, just making, making stuff up. Uh, that's our current. Um, so why is the number of game they will play six game? Uh, and why obviously Yuri can win all of them. So why will be six? And uh, Yuri can last uh, play, uh, win zero game. So it will be zero. Uh, so this can be summed up as the uh, probability mass function of all of this possibility. So this is not anymore just like, uh, this is like the probability of y uh, for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, giving p, who can be like the value of 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0 0.8. So it's kind of, you can sum, think of it at the beginning as a, some kind of matrix. And why is any possible uncurve? Obviously, like currently we have just, they just have played before and now they will replay and now we'll like get a new value Y. And maybe if it will be Y1, let's say, an index of one. And if they replay again, it will be Y2, et cetera, et cetera. But we just will have another matches. Uh, we can also represent, so we can represent that as um, the binomial distribution which is the number of success in a fixed number of try n. Uh, they give us the function of, uh, they give us like the mathematical function of binomial distribution. I haven't reproduced all of them here. Uh, I just get them for like the, because like we know we just have six uh, trio that just will play six times. Uh, I have to add that the binomial distribution imply, I mean, needs the game to be independent. That's mean like, it's a bit of an approximation. We can think like maybe if Kasparov is losing, he will be in a losing streak. He will have bad mental and will impact the next game. But currently in this situation, we are not assuming that. Uh, and P is fixed. Uh, yes. So that's mean P between the game is fixed. That's the probably uh, the. Level the skill level of uh, Gasparov will relative to Deep Blue will need change on each matches. Is it good? This is just setting up like defining the model. So uh, this is the the small tilde is like we are is indicating that it's a stochastic uh, process or a simulation. And below is just the formula of the binomial distribution, giving like we have like six uh, trial on um, and why um, why uh, could come. So I haven't done, so you can, uh, we can use the prior P. So we have three priors. So we can change the parameter of this equation and we can change the, the Y can be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. We can do all the calc. And in fact, that have been done on the book. So this will, will provide like the result of a model, like a model that's, I think it's here. Uh, no, maybe it was before, let me see. So this 
So yeah, that was that was used. Uh, and the author, like I haven't reproduced, I don't know they, they make it, so I, I couldn't reproduce them. So for every kind of uh, p-value, they calculated the relative probability of each uh, event possible. Each event can be UA win zero match, one matches, three matches, four matches, six matches. And then you get different kind of a distrib I mean, possible outcome. Is it good? I can probably check the book if needed, no? Do you think it's needed or we can go next? Okay. Okay, now we are bringing data. So we have we have like pick uh, prior, we have pick a model to represent it, to represent the data. Now we are like data are incoming, uh, gas power up, just win one game. So this gives us the likelihood giving P, which we don't know. This is what we want to know. Like what's the skill level of gas power? Is it closer to zero two? Is it like zero five or is it zero eight? Given that the outcome of it is just one win on six. For that, we can calculate, uh, we can like reuse uh, our function. It's a bit laborious. I have done it. I assure it's a bit laborious, <laughs> but you can do it. It's no, it's no difficult. This is no, this is just basic maths. Like obviously uh, I made error. I have, re I have to redo it and, until I get correct. Uh, what is more likely? Uh, and then we, we know that finally the value that is more likely is the one with the pi the lowest value. So the skill of gas power related to deep blue is 0.2. This is the one that provides that's are more likely. Okay. Now um, they give another uh, another distinction between what is probability mass function versus likelihood function. The probability mass function uh, is when you know the conditional. Uh, when you know p, when p is known, the conditional probability mass function allows us to compare the probability of different possible value of data occurring in p, and the likelihood is different. Is when we know when um, when y when, when the data when we assume like y is equal to the data is known, the likelihood function allows us to compare the relative value of p, which is in our case just three p two p uh, p p one p two p three. But because we're like we, sh we choose discrete value of p, it can be like more. Then if we want to, um, like if you remember, like we we have like the we have the prior, we have the likelihood now. This is just like uh, what we have calculated. We have three of them for every kind of p. We have like we just need like if we want to um, apply the bias rules and uh, do the know the posterior distribution, we just need to normalize. By the constant, so it's a so. For that, we need to know um, the sum of the value of it. I mean, so I have applied. Um, I have I have done it. I just give you a bit of it. So, <clears throat> if we apply the law of total probability, so the sum of all likelihood for each value of p, the prior probability of this p value, that will give us like. Uh, the the probability mass function of y equal one equal six percent. This is a bit hard. And now that we have everything, we can calculate the posterior probability model. We have the prior, we have the likelihood, the normal is constant, and we can calculate the posterior probability model. Is it good? Uh, so like we said, the normalized constant is just a constant. So even if we need to, to calculate it to get like something that's uh, uh, sum to one, like is it, it's a full probability, uh, we can also just compare the result. Like this is just what we have done before. Like for example, in the case of fake news and exclamation points, like when you know like uh, a fake news, um, I use a fake news article with uh, fake news article have way more chance that have um, exclamation points, and when you know like a real article have well less chance to have um, an exclamation point, you can kind of assume that, but you need like to sum it up 
to the normalized constant just to, to do the math correctly. It's not exactly that, but to probability to work. So that's why you can say like the posterior is just as a constant because like the normalizing constant is the same. Like it's just the probability of, um, uh, I don't remember, but it's all, for all the events, it's the same. So it's a constant, it doesn't change in all the events in the, so you can assume like the posterior is more or less a constant, the prior uh, multiply the likelihood. Does it make sense? Uh, if I go back to this, um, maybe here it will be clear, like, let me go. Uh, where is it? No. Yeah, maybe. So here, the the normal is it's probability gi uh, the giving uh, a the probability of having an exclamation point, and the probability of having an exclamation point doesn't change. It's all this always the same, and it's the same on the probability of um, here uh, after. It's always the same. Uh, it's always the same uh, across all, all the all it. So this is a bit of shortcut. So you can use it, like at the big, because like what you will have, like it's here, like it's basically you have that, like you have like all of that, like the thirty nine percent, like you know, if, if you check the second line of the equation of the f of the function of y equal one, uh, it gives you um, the probability of uh, the p of 0.2, p of 0.5, and p of 0.8. And we see like the that p, so that Gasparov of high level of skills against the blue, the 0. white, is very unlikely of the one of 0. 0.2. And here you can also apply this shortcut. So you can all sum all this probability and divide uh, and use him as a normalizing constant instead of multiplying by the, um, uh, the, um, the function of uh, pi. I mean, the probability of uh, p equal 0.2, probability of p equal 0.5, et cetera, et cetera. It's not this part, I think it was easy. You just check it, it's a constant. I mean, I have done stupidly the because it let you do what I do it. First, you do it like you do it for you recalculate like, uh, every constant that you do posterior while normalizing, and then they bring you the shortcut. And so after um, that, they the redo like a, a posterior simulation. Yeah, it's 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 also very simple. Like we are just like. Uh, creating a data frame with pi value. Pi is like the possible option that we give to um, the skills of Gasparov. We are setting up our prior and then we simulate it, uh, plenty of uh, value giving the prior. And then we draw with a binomial uh, with the possible value of P. We, and then to get the correct results. Because what is also interesting with this simulation is like you will simulate for other value of y. It can be y equal to y equals three, y equal four, y equal six, et cetera. Well, that's it, <laughs> five and six. We already have six value possible defined. So because this is defined at size equals six here. Uh, and so like to match our data, we just filter to y equal one because you would just win one game. And that just does give you like the, the ones that have more option is this 0 0.25. Is it good? As, I, don't, I don't think my explanation was good. <laughs> so feel free to add more stuff. And uh, well, I haven't done the exercise, so I'm guilty. So. I will not discuss them, but I promise I will do that to them. If we want to go back to uh, the learning uh, objectives, I don't think 
if we don't, I mean, it's fine if you are a bit lost or stuff that doesn't make sense because probably I haven't explaining well. Just read the the stuff and 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 especially do do the time to do the math. Even if it's stupid, I mean, it's stupid. It's not very interesting to use a piece of paper and fill out the equation and see what you get. I at least uh, I understand it better that way. But like every learner is different. You like to go back to the oh likelihood. Okay, sure. Let's go back to the likelihood. I'm drinking beer. Cheers. This is Brendan. Uh, uh, because Brendan is in the cafe, so no. <laughs> No, we are all in French at time. Uh, we are all in Europe time. Maybe just the formula. I don't know, just to figure out what's uh, between the two. Because then, then you have this long formula and you use the likelihood. Let, let's go to the book. Up. Uh, it will be better. Uh, yeah, welcome the book all right hope it was good see you see you soon um okay let's go back to the big form the da, 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 da. i think it's here the likely do you see my uh, conditional probability and likelihood okay so this stuff was good like the probability of seeing a puppy uh when you know something like definitely read it like it, it will it will help you understand like that i like it uh probability versus likelihood okay it's here so you kind of said they said it like the likelihood of p knowing b is equal to the probability of e knowing b knowing uh, the probability of a knowing b it's just the first part of it here. And why they do that? They do that because uh, they explain it like um, a bit below. The probability of A giving B allows us to compare the probability of an ugno event A or A uh, complements occurring with B. Why the likelihood? is kind of the, uh, the relative probability of data A with the event B. Like this is more like what we add. Like if you just check the data, you know, the data was like, uh, what, we, what we have is the, um, mm, 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 what, what, we, what we have is that, it's the likelihood. This is basically the probability of, B giving explanation point. This is data. So this is the probability. We know that fake news giving explanation are 26%. This is the this is the table. Like here, you have like the distinction between the our prior and the likelihood on the table 2.2. And this is some things provided by the data. This that's why it's more a likelihood than uh, the prior, which is something like we define it at the beginning. But you can say that also like if, it's like not if we a probability are... function. What? It's not, it's not a probability function. Yes. Likely... It's important to, and obviously after this is something that you use here, on the bias rules, on the bias theorem. Because what we want is the probability of exclamation points. And this is something like that. And this, part, uh, this part is the good one. Like. You don't necessarily lean like, but like basically like the probability of a with like the little a like 
uh, the B, uh, you can like, this is just an application of, uh, you just derive it from uh, this part, from the 2.2. So it's not, I mean, take your time doing, uh, this is my advice, take your time just writing them. I, I, I was stupid, I'm stupid, I have writing them. Like I have literally take a pen, write them and, and make myself like, this is, you will feel stupid because like you probably have done that when you are like in school and don't remember it, but that, that will come back. Okay. Is it good? Should I, should I copy the cookie example also and add it? Yeah, yeah. Because when I close the Zoom, I don't know if it will be here. Copy. Sorry for my bad English. It's here. So next week, I haven't checked it, but someone is doing it. So we're good. I think that's me. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm slightly going, oh, <laughs> bloody hell, what have I let myself in for? But um, yeah, I'm going to have a busy weekend. Actually, you know, I'll try, I'll try and do the exercises as well, but I'm not going to promise. But yeah, I should, I should, I should give it okay, a go. How many week. pages do you have? Oh, you have some pages. Yeah. Yes. So. Uh, Mm. This is a big one. I mean, all of them are fun. Oh, no. Uh, let me say, yeah, a bit like nine, 19 pages. <laughs> yeah, it's. I did have a look at it. I did have a look at um, the next chapter this week, and I did go, oh, shit, what have I let myself in for? But, you know, that's at the start. After, yeah, after we I've read all... it a few times, and, you know, it'll, it'll we be are all here for them. I will do my own work and I, I will I will I will work it so I can help. Mm, smashing. <laughs> but I'm sure you will do fine. Okay. Fingers well, crossed. thanks for Fingers crossed. thanks yeah. for like uh, being the, the, the next one. <laughs> yeah. And if you have trouble, like ask. Okay. Cool. Well, it was smashing. nice. See you. Yeah, that was good. Thank you. Bye. Thank Take you. Care. Bye.